there's a lot of research about why people cheat, why men and women make this terrible decision to do this, because at the end of the day, it is a choice no matter what. And I'm going to do a video about it because I'm working with a client right now. He's young, he's married, and he found out his wife has been cheating on him. And just like, I think a lot of times when couples, when one person is cheating, if you just hear about it, you automatically assume that it was a guy cheating. But just as many women cheat as guys do. And it's just as devastating. This guy is lost. Everything he believed in is a lie. He feels like he's been betrayed at the deepest level. And we talk about the psychological devastation of the partner. And I think many times it's overlooked because people in general, in society, believe um, emotions, especially real emotions, like the kind that just tear you apart, are more feminine when you cry, when you feel lost. They're a feminine thing. But believe me, feelings are feelings, and it doesn't matter what gender you are. This guy is really grieving. I want this video to be about the psychological devastation that happens to the spouse who was cheated on. Because although we talk about the steps and what leads up to cheating, we don't talk so much about what happens to the partner, what they go through, whether they decide to stay with their partner or not. The issues are you still have to walk through hell to get out or to move past being betrayed on. So I've got four psychological passages, if you will, that you have to go through. And I think if you know up front, you won't have those times when you feel like you're going crazy. You still will feel the confusion. You still will heal, feel the hurt and just the incredible sense of loss. But knowing that it's expected, knowing that everybody who was cheated on goes through these four in some way, I think it's going to help you. The first, the self-blame and self-loathing. You will go through a period where you blame yourself. I was working too much. I wasn't attentive. I was too involved with the kids. I was too involved with other things, with our church or whatever. You will own a part of yourself that makes you feel like it was your responsibility, that you could have done something differently. And you will hate yourself for what you did if you are a, if you're thinking that could have led to the to the cheating now i'm going to tell you something here that i think will help if your partner felt that you weren't around much if your partner felt like they weren't getting the attention they need it was your partner's responsibility to tell you if they didn't speak up if they didn't tell you in a direct way then you cannot blame yourself you will have those times when you do that. And maybe if you get together again, if you are able to forgive her or him in this scenario, you may be able to work it out. But if you can't, you will more than likely be in another relationship. And then that's a time to remember that maybe I pull back from work. Maybe I give her more attention. But for right now, the self-loathing and the self-blame it is not your fault, and I want you to hear that loud and clear from me. Secondly, the incredible loss. You will go through an incredible sense of loss. You lost everything. You lost, you lost the possibility of a dream. You lost the possibility of where will you guys live? Who will keep the house if you separate? What about the kids if you have children? Who gets them? How do we tell them? The kids are going to lose a family the kids are going to lose the two of you married together your parents are going to lose because they're going to have to hear the news your grand your grandparents your friends your neighbors you're no longer the couple you thought you were you were and in a very real sense this loss is made up of all the expectations visions and everything the two of you shared together. So it is very intense. And there will be grieving at the end of that loss. And you have to make a space for it, embrace it, 
and accept it. Thirdly, anxiety. There will be increased anxiety. You'll start worrying about the what ifs. You'll start worrying about what are we going to do for money? Are we going to get divorced? How do we split stuff? We just got this new house. Who's going to live in the house? Do we have to sell the house? What about the kids? Will they have to have two houses? What about if we do get back together? Will I be able to trust her again? All these things are going to make your anxiety sky high. You have to know this in advance so you can go to your medical doctor and tell them what's going on and get the help, the mental health help you're going to need. It's very important because otherwise you'll turn to alcohol or drugs to calm this anxiety. In fact, a lot of people who get into into other relationships are trying to use that as a vice to help control their anxiety. You do not want that. That's only going to cause more confusion and more problems. You want to be sure you're practicing good self-care by taking care of your health first. And I think the last one is just that reduced self-esteem. It's going to be hard to be the person you were. You may have felt good about your manliness. You may have felt like you look good, like you were the man. And if your wife cheats on you, you will go through a lot of doubt. Just as if you're the woman and your husband cheats on you, you're going to feel like you're not pretty enough, you're not sexy enough, you're not good enough. All these thoughts are very much part of this. Reframe from doing anything to your cosmetic look or to your body during this time because many people especially if they felt like they had let themselves go they start going to spas they start going to gyms those things may be good for you for self-care but they're not good as a way of making you feel like you're suitable for your partner or someone else you are enough everything you do should be focused on maintaining your mental health and your physical health. So by all means, go to the gym. That's a wonderful way to reduce anxiety and start making you feel more confident again. But don't do it to win another person back because whether your partner wants to come back in your life or not, that's a decision the two of you are going to have to work out. But you were good enough. They didn't cheat on you because you weren't good enough. They cheated on them, on you, because they were selfish and they wanted what they wanted and they decided to cheat.